What is up, people? I am back. You know how there's a shit ton of games that have movement in them? Some have the generic first-person shooter type movement. Some are just the classic WASD baseball crouch. Some have movement that, uh, that really, really stands out. And personally, I feel the games these days kind of lack in the movement department. That doesn't include my game, but uh, I played quite a few indie titles that do extremely well, like Ultra Kill. But I thought, you know, I should take it to the next level. But no now, I'm, I'm sure some of you guys are going to mention some great games like that I haven't heard of or played, but I I'm sure they aren't great either, you know? I, I don't think so. One AAA game I know that does movement extremely well is Titanfall. Another might be Mirror's Edge, although the movement may be less snappy and more realistic. I kind of want the mix between these two. Oh. I know what you guys might be saying. Underdog, there's so many indie games that do this. See, you might be right. Oh. See, you might be right, but um, I, I, I chose not to hear that. Yeah, it's my game. I can do whatever I want. Bitch. So you might be wondering why I haven't posted in three months, and that's because I kind of lost control. No, like, literally. But I had to give my laptop for repair, and that's probably, I mean, that's actually, that, that's actually not the reason. Um, it's because I procrastinate. Now, if you notice on the left, we can see a bunch of states in the game. The problem with this, however, is the states are not managed really well, and it's all cluttered into one movement script. This is really bad for efficiency, and you can see how the conditions are just nested onto one another. So if I continue adding more movement features, this would be a mess. So to solve this, we use a finite state machine pattern. So let's understand what a state is. You watching this video right now is basically a state called watching video. After you finish that state, you'll probably do something else, like, I don't know, watch hentai. So after you finish this video, you'll basically move on to doing another state. It could be watching maybe another video, so you'll probably repeat that state or a condition where you can get out of that state. Both of these states don't have any interaction with each other and doesn't really care unless you want them to be. Uh, just like how I don't have any interaction with um, anyone else. They ask you how you are. But you can easily see how handling logic in each state is a lot easier than cluttering it up. So I've looked upon GitHub for a finite state machine system in Godot because uh, why code when you can just steal it? And I came upon this system on GitHub that I cannot find anymore. I think the developers took it down, which I'm not sure why, but the code was MIT, so, um, control C, control V. Oh wait, sh I don't have control. After hooking up all the states together, the code is a lot cleaner and doesn't look like it's written by a five-year-old. So if you didn't know, my game No Shot is going to be more of a movement parkour type game, similar to what you see in Mirror's Edge. And in some parkour games, you're allowed to vault over objects to keep the movement going. I wanted to replicate this system, kind of like how you see a vault happen from this parkour pop. All I'm doing is checking if there's a valid vault point from a raycast. Once the point is found, I just teleport the player in a curved fashion on that point. I also made it in a way where you automatically vault while sliding or while in air to just keep the momentum going. It still requires a little more polishing and the sounds aren't that great, but for now it does the job. So some people might be curious to what No Shot is and what it's about and why I'm even making this game in the first place. For the most part, No Shot is going to be a parkour game. I've been writing and planning most of the game in a game design document. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to be revealing too much detail about it yet. Anyway, so far the project is coming well together, but there's one mechanic that's missing. Wall running. A mechanic that first person titles like Titanfall and Mirror's Edge excels at. And well, how is that made? Well, good question because I, I, I don't know either. First, let's talk about why you can wall run. The answer to that is, well, you know, physics. To be able to wall run in the first place, you need to build up momentum. What is momentum? P equals mv. But let's consider m as one, so it's basically velocity. You need to build up velocity in order to do a horizontal wall run. Else, I mean, you're just jumping, like, like, oh what are you, God. bro, what are you doing? So in order for me to wall run here, I need to build up momentum first. I mean, well, I, I can't, but uh, you, you get my, you get my point. So since gravity is constantly acting upon me, I fall down eventually. So if you mark down the forces, we have a force driving me forward. We have a friction force and we have gravity. It's honestly basic math and physics, but implementing this type of logic in a video game can be pretty tough to nail right. Well, not for me, because I mean, I'm a, I'm a pretty, pretty chat developer, you know? Oh! So the actual wall running part is done and we can understand how a wall run works. We just need to implement this logic in the game. Now that's the hard part. 
See, look, I can go up to a wall. I know what a wall is. I know the constraints. I know what the angles are. It's as easy as just going up to a wall and wall running. But the game doesn't know that. It's like trying to ask a question on Twitter when you know like you're going to get the wrong answers only. Anyway, so we have to figure out how to detect a wall first. Now, I've looked upon a few other tutorials and resources to see how other people implemented this. And some people do right and left raycasts, which honestly um, is pretty fun inefficient to me. A raycast is simple, just sending out a ray from one point to another and checking if it hits anything. It can return information like the hit point, the normal, etc. But sending two raycasts and then checking them that way is annoying and painful for something like this because there's two sides. So what I did was I used Godot's Collider class that allows you to extract an information of a specific collision point. Now there might be a high chance you didn't get any of that. Well, welcome to game development. So the first check is we gotta see if the wall is tall enough. Then we have to see if the wall is actually facing sideways. We can use the dot product for this with the normal of the wall and the global up vector. The dot product is pretty darn powerful in this case because it allows you to see how close one vector is to another in a normalized value. So if it's zero in this case, it's facing sideways. If it's one, it's facing upwards. Now you don't want to do a horizontal wall run when you bump into a wall. To counter that, you add angle constraints so that if the player is only facing towards the general direction of the wall, the wall run happens. So, um, what do you think? Yeah, this, see, this is why you get absolutely no bitches. Anyway, the detection is done and we have the direction we need to go in. So now it's all about implementing the logic we talked about earlier. This part didn't take too long, I just had to play with a couple of values and apply the forces correctly. Anyway, uh, here's, here's the full result. Nice. Also, in the last devlog, I mentioned about how I like motion blur. Motion blur. Since a chunk of you might not want that, I actually removed it and actually settled on a radial blur that only blurs when you're moving at higher speeds. Hopefully, that should make all the motion blur haters happy. Yeah, like, you guys ruined the fun for everyone. If you're a nerd, you can view the whole project on my GitHub. It's open source. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, I'll see you guys uh, next year. <laughs>